So recently I got this comment on a video, why do we need electricity here at all? This could have been made completely mechanical transmission reducer and it would have been simpler. Well how does this work? Let's have a little look at the mechanism. And this crank does actually turn the turntable, but not directly. It's doing it via, via a couple of motors. So this motor here has been used as a generator. This motor here is driving the turntable. So the electrically driven turntable I've just shown isn't the first thing of this type I've tried to build. I've done several mechanical ones. Here's one from a few years ago, pretty much the first design I ever tried. I'm using the crank off the drill that I used for my last experiment. I'm using a chuck. I'm using um, a right angle Black & Decker drill adapter and a, a lathe or um, I should say a drill vise at the bottom there. Now if you saw my first video on my hand crank gramophone you were probably less than impressed by the sound quality. Now the record was recognisable as a song just about but it's very difficult to make out what was actually being sung about. No kidding, that was absolutely awful. Now I've realised there were several things I was doing wrong. First of all, I was cranking too fast. The gearbox is a 2 to 1 ratio Black & Decker drill box. And um, I was cranking probably once a second and I really need to be cranking about 39 times every minute. Now it's all very well knowing how fast I'm supposed to be cranking but uh, that's easier said than done. So uh, in this video, or this clip of the video here, I actually have a sensor connected up to an analogue display to help me see how fast I'm cranking. But as you can hear, it's still pretty rubbish. It's almost impossible for me to actually uh, crank at the right speed. So technology advanced, got a better sensor, got a better setup but still the same fundamental problems. Let's give it a listen. Even having an accurate display showing me the RPM I'm cranking at doesn't really help. I can get it somewhere around 78 RPM, but um, not really spot on and not actually keeping to that uh, RPM speed for any length of time at all. Even the very first version of this electrically driven gramophone suffered from much the same problem. I did have a cunning idea though, but I thought it was worth demonstrating it as it was before I tried putting the idea into practice. So that sounds pretty awful and the reason being is there's just no regulation on uh, how fast I wind the handle. The faster I wind it, uh, the faster the turntable goes. And uh, if, I, um, if I actually use uh, this app on my phone here, this is a RPM calculator or something similar to that. Let's line that up. And... Um, spin that around like that you can see that it's not difficult to get it sort of in the area of about you know 78 rpm or so but it's all over the place it's jumping between 70 something and 80 something and um, that just sounds awful really now back in the day um, when uh, gramophones or phonographs were first invented uh, hand wind machines like this admittedly not with electric motors but with sort of direct drive were quite common um, and uh, people did apparently manage to get them to play reasonably well and I think uh, with a bit of practice you could get them to sound or get uh, the, the sort of speed okay but um, I find the whole thing very unsatisfactory so um, I thought well much like a rural gramophone motor has a governor maybe I can fit a governor to this too. But hang on you're asking, 
why didn't I just set a governor to one of the previous designs I did? I mean, it's not like governors in you or anything. Uh, here's, a, here's a governor on a Garrard 30 type motor. This one is from a HMV 102. Now the governor stops the motor running too fast. As the motor runs, the governor spins and as it spins, it draws uh, a disc against the pad. And uh, as the disc uh, rubs against the pad, it slows the motor down. So essentially, the motor will always try to run fast and the governor will keep it slowed down to a certain speed, basically maintaining the speed. So what I've done is I've actually connected up this unit here, in fact this motor here, to my bench power supply and worked out what the correct voltage is to run it at 78 RPM. And then what I've done is then created or put together this little circuit here and this circuit uh, regulates the power. So although if I put too little power in or too little voltage in it, it won't run at the right speed. If I put slightly too much in, it will actually cut it down or regulate it down to the, the correct amount of voltage to run at uh, 78 RPM or, or thereabouts. That's in there now. Hopefully I've got that all the right way around. I have got uh, diodes, um, protection diodes to make sure that I don't accidentally connect it up incorrectly. Um, now does that work? Yes. So on the face of it, no difference. But uh, let's actually uh, try the app again. So you can see that, uh, well if I turn it slowly first, you can see that turning it slowly doesn't make it run at the right speed. And it's all over the place. So that's slow, I can speed it up and I can slow it down. But if I wind it faster, we get to about 78, 79 RPM. You can see it actually sticks around the sort of 78, 79 RPM. And that's because the regulator is actually limiting the voltage to the amount needed to go at that speed. Let's hear it with the regulator in place. So basically the problem is that a, a direct connection, a direct connection between the crank and the turntable just doesn't work very well it's pretty much impossible to get the speed correct and to maintain the speed with such a simple uh, connection. So a governor is the answer. However, a mechanical governor is not simple to build. It's actually quite complicated. So therefore, that's why I went with an electrical solution. Anyway, well, I hope that's been interesting and maybe informative also. And uh, if you like this video, then you might like this one too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.